my single goal today is to, is to help all of us fall in love with the Old Testament. Uh, my goal this morning is to create in each of our hearts a new sense of wonder for the Old uh, Testament. If you had a choice to be in the shoes of Rachel or be in the shoes of Leah, who would you rather be? Who is more blessed? Who is more likely, in your view, to have a happier life, Rachel or Leah? And I bet all of us would answer, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. We would rather be Rachel than be Leah. I would be really surprised if any of us tells me that I'd rather be Leah. Many of the heroes of the Old Testament, like Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, were polygamous, murderous, angry, drunken, and sinful men. But standing tall, standing high, standing beautiful above the flaws of all these men is Christ Jesus, the only man who never sinned, not even once. And so the Bible is the story of, of all of these sinful men who did some atrocious things and who deserved to be punished. The first objection is simply this. Does the Bible endorse polygamy? Because Jacob here has two wives, and what more? He has two more servants as well, uh, who are pretty much are given to him as wives. So does the Bible endorse polygamy? The answer is a clear no. The Bible does not endorse polygamy. Polygamy is a sin. Just because the Bible narrates the story of a polygamous man does not mean that the Bible endorses it. The Bible also narrates the adultery of many men. That does not mean that the Bible endorses adultery. I think this, this should bring us to consider this one question. What is the Old Testament all about. Sure, the Old Testament has some amazing heroes of faith, but almost all of these men, without exception, also had several flaws in their character that God healed by His grace. And Leah says, now, this time, I will praise the Lord. This time, I will praise the Lord. What changed when Leah's fourth son, Judah, was born. Everything changed when Judah was born because Christ Jesus descended from the line of Judah, Leah's fourth son. Of the 12 sons that Jacob had, Christ Jesus, because of a promise God had given to Abraham, had to descend from one of these 12 sons, and Jesus Christ descended from Judah, Leah's fourth son. Not Rachel's son, Leah's fourth son. Leah, of course, did not at this point in time realize the full significance. I'm pretty sure she didn't quite understand everything that was happening. She didn't quite understand that Christ the Messiah would be born from her womb through the line of Judah. The loneliness of Leah pointed to the ultimate loneliness of Jesus. The king of heaven and earth was lonely when he hung on the cross. All his disciples deserted him. God himself abandoned him. The rejection of Leah pointed to the rejection of Jesus. Leah was rejected by Jacob, but on the cross, when Jesus carried our sins upon himself, God punished and rejected Jesus. Because it is only through the punishment of Jesus that we can be forgiven. He was forsaken so that we could be forgiven. Jesus is closest to us when we are at our saddest. Jesus is closest to us when we are at our loneliest. Jesus is closest to us at our unloved worst. You and I, we have all been unfaithful to Jesus in our moments of success. We have not given God the glory that is due to Him. We have not given God the worship. We have not given God the devotion of our heart that is due to Him. We have abandoned Jesus. We have failed Jesus in our moments of success. But in our moments of failure, Jesus will not abandon us. And so if you truly desire to draw close to Jesus, if you truly desire to be growing your intimacy with Him, suffering is something we must learn to embrace. 